Sorry. Hey, you beautiful buccaneers, Falcor here. So first of all, I just wanted to thank everyone who turned up to the Twitch drops last week. It consumed a lot of my time, hence why video production was lacking. It takes around 8-12 to 12 hours to put a video together, and with each day last week being consumed by live streams, it got a little hard to burn the candle at both ends. However, the good news is, in the UK we are now in lockdown. Well, that's not good news, but it does mean lots of more free time, so I can get back to doing what I love talking about the game with you folks. So the latest update is upon us, and once again we are faced with another Halloween event. Now I've been seeing a lot of buzz within the community that this event was recycled content, and although that's very true in terms of aesthetics, at the end of the day it's just another Halloween event. So if you were expecting a huge expansion to the game when there is a monthly update cadence, you're really clutching at straws to be honest. That said though, there is a very valid reason for Grey Marrow to be returning. Again. And again. Uh, and again. Before the release of this update, the developers shared a very interesting image on social media. A page filled with skeletal script. Now, for those not as near as nerdy as myself, this script translates to Flame Ritual Flame from Pirate to Camp Skull to Flame Skeleton Lord Resurrection Lord to face Captain Flame to heart. Cage flame to heart for eternity. This text in half is explaining the events of this update. A flame from the dead build rap pirates in this update, taking their flames of fate to their camp, igniting the flame in the skull of their leader and resurrecting him at their camp. The second half, however, is much more interesting. Lord to face Captain Flame to heart. Now, this part is written strangely. Keep in mind that these are pictographs, and pictographs can mean any number of things when put in a certain order. We do not know what this order is yet, so we have to rely on the rudimentary translation we are given from tall tale journals and other sources of this skeletal script. But Lord to face Captain Flame to heart could very easily mean rival as powerful as Captain Flameheart. It's kind of hard to explain what I mean in such a short amount of time without going into a huge nerd spree about how ancient pictographs work in our own world history, so for now just nod and agree. The last part, Cage Flame to Heart for Eternity, is the most interesting line. Putting this whole pictograph together, we can assume that a skeletal faction loyal to Grey Marrow are trying to return him to the physical realm using the Flames of Fate, to be an adversary for Captain Flameheart. And this would make a lot of sense. After all, Grey Marrow is pretty old. He was around when Flameheart was flesh and blood the Gold Order and the Pirate Lord too, and was one of the very first crews to find the Sea of Thieves. Of course, he was flesh and blood in this time also, but if it wasn't for our intervention in the Tall Tales, he would have been quite a force to tangle with. His goal was to reach the Shores of Gold, and we still don't fully know why. This place is filled with so much ancient knowledge, and he did almost anything he could to find it, and through sheer determination and tricking Pendragon into giving him the knowledge to bind souls and then using that knowledge to bind Pendragon and anyone else who stood in his way, if he had survived and been successful and he found whatever it was he was looking for, he would have been a very powerful force, maybe even enough to rival Captain Flameheart himself. But here's the interesting thing, Grey Marrow has had this binding magic for quite some time now, and has used this knowledge to stop human souls from joining the Ferry of the Damned, where they cannot return. He's also bound skeletal skulls to certain objects to form magical talismans. He was also present through Flameheart's first attack on the Sea of Thieves, long before any of us got here, and possibly had his own armada. And Flameheart's soul was bound to his own body. Flameheart did say that he had been betrayed by his own kind. All those long years spent trapped inside my own remains, betrayed by my own kind. Could it be possible that Grey Marrow was the one responsible for putting Flameheart to rest?
We know that Flameheart planned for his eventual demise, and went about acquiring a way for him to return if he was slain. Could it be possible that he forced Grey Marrow to give him the information about his soul-binding magic? But unbeknown to him, Grey Marrow tricked him and betrayed him, giving him the ability he seeked, but also putting him to rest, so that Grey Marrow could fulfill his agenda without the worry of his counterpart. They say he sunk with this ship and all them cursed cannons. Gone for good, I reckon. And now, with the accidental help of Wanda and Stitcher Jim, with unleashing the Fort of the Damned, and bringing Grey Marrow back into the land of the living, those loyal to him are trying to bring him back, using the knowledge left by those loyal to Flameheart, the Tomes of Resurrection. Maybe Flameheart isn't the one we should be worried about. Fate of the Damned is recycled content. <laughs> okay, Karen.